Hey, Soul Family. I'm Kamala Devi, and I'm here with Winter Jade Isley. And this is a really fun, impromptu conversation. Um, Winter's been asking me like about Peru since we'll be co-facilitating there, co-leading um, our uh, ISTA in just about like less than a month. So it's coming up really soon. And, um, and I thought some of the questions that Winter had should be shared with our soul family. Um, but first, you know, what's really magical is that I'm in San Diego and where are you right now? I'm in New Zealand. Which means we're like hugging the planet from the Northern and Southern hemisphere. And it happens to be at this event horizon of, for me, Samhain and for you, Beltane. Mm -hmm. So I think I want to just start by talking about the magic of um, these powerful pagan holidays. Like mm -hmm. for me, Samhain's about like the death and transition and transformation, whereas Beltane's about life. And, and so we, we really have these polarities mm -hmm. held. Do you want to mm -hmm. say what more about Beltane? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're going to go into a beautiful temple tonight here, um, celebrating the stag, the, the the myth of the stag and the May Queen. Mm -hmm. So the the sacred consummation between the dark masculine and the light feminine, and and the fecundity of the earth. So we're gonna we're gonna jump over the fire tonight and and um, put on our horns and and actually just celebrate fertility, the fertility of the land here as spring starts to blossom and new shoots are coming up from the earth and. And there's a real celebration of, yeah, the fertile remembering of spring. So that's, we're going to sort of ritualize that tonight here. It's yeah. so powerful. Like I get chills because I'm thinking uh, I'm Latina and this is Dia de los Muertos. So like right around the Halloween when the veils are thin, I'm going to get together with my mother and my my prima and, and um, which is cousin. So I'm getting together with my Latin family and we're going to go celebrate the skeletons and the sugar skulls. And <laughs> we're going to be with all these images of like uh, death and what's powerful about the skeleton as a symbol, it also shows up really strongly in Peru. But the, the idea that underneath the flesh in the 3D, like with deep within the darkness of our bone marrow, is the formless, you know, so that, you know, we, we may be kind of seduced by all the form of life, but within that death always exists. So Dia de los Muertos and Samhain are really times to look at, uh, you know, death is part of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty rich moment to be talking about mm -hmm. this journey we're taking mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's some, I mean, it's my first time there. So this is why I, I wanted to talk to you because, yeah, I mean, there's so much around the land there, particularly that I, I, I want to ask about. And and I know that years ago I had one of my Chinese medicine teachers say that, you know, that there's there's a sense or, or a knowing of the Kundalini of the earth that's moved from, you know, around the Tibet region down to around like this this area, Peru, so there's a there's a and you can see that in the upwelling of plant medicine magic and and shamanism. So there there's something that I'm really curious around from yeah your experience last time being there in a container of vista. What was yeah what was your your relationship More with than, this work there? Yeah, um, this, so this work like as we do spiritual yeah. sexual shamanic work, doing it in the land, it is the place in which I felt the land the most like the, the upwelling of the wis wisdom of nature. And it's so apparent, you know, we have these towering mountains uh, and they call it, they call them Apu. They're like guardians, they're like teachers. Um, and, and that's where we'll be doing this is in the sacred valley. But it's such a powerful um, contrast and complement, you know, to the depths of the Amazon. Like Peru has the plant medicine and the wisdom of, you know, the biodiversity of the Amazon and where, wherein a lot of the um, shamanism is extremely alive, actually in the mountains, as well as in the Amazon, it's not like a lot of cultures, shamanism went dormant and then there's a revival, but this is like 
always been cultivated and passed on and still very alive. It's not a revival. It's a like an ever present part of life there. Like shamanism is not something that's separate. It's like, you know, in the art, it's in the pottery, it's in the costume, like it's just part of life. So, um, so yeah, nature. And then also, uh, the current culture that embraces, uh, you know, these forces of life and death and, um, and the, the teachings of multiple dimensional traveling, you know, in, in the waking world. Mm. Mm. What calls you when you said Mm. yes to Peru? What was your, Mm. yeah, I mean, the land was definitely, I said, I feel the sense of deep humility coming. There's a sense of what the very thing you're saying that there's, there's some magic there or, or like deep lineages there that I feel have been held that I want to come and kind of pray to, you know, through this work and, and be in deep humility too. So that was kind of like the sense I had when I said, yes, was some part of me in a, in a devotional stance of being on my knees and humbly is coming and, and um and being with whatever is there and, and also th- this work for Easter and the, the the power of the transformational fields there's something really beautiful about coming with humility to those lands but bringing also opening a container where that they're like the the the, the, Easter, the the deity of Easter is so powerful as well there's something so beautifully alive there and having those stitched together somehow and in a kind of co-creative energy that's what I sense when I when I said yes to that so I love yeah. that that humility because you know as co-leads there's a way that we're we're coming where we're co-creating but the real teacher is the land mm-hmm. like the real teacher is you know the mineral kingdom and the animal kingdom and the plant medicine and and then you know like our medicine in ISTA isn't plant medicine even though that wisdom's imbued in the space and the even the teachers that we're going to have do the land acknowledgement, uh, the local shamans, uh, our medicine is Eros and Kundalini and uh, the erotic life force. Mm-hmm. But that goes so beautifully. You know, it's a collaboration with what's already really alive and vibrating <laughs> in this space. Mm-hmm. In fact, it happens to be a a venue that's a kundalini yoga venue Mm -hmm. couched like walking distance between two ancient temples Mm -hmm. like we're going to be able to do our ceremonies amongst the Mm -hmm. stonework and um you know in in places where ceremonies are Mm -hmm. you know they're alive they're cultivated they're in the stones Mm -hmm. i love that too that that sense of you know, when you were sharing around life and death and so when and bells hanging that, you know, we're working with those energies through Eros as well. So there's a, there's a, you know, although there is a human component too, to the, um, to the work where we're actually going into connection with others and, and a field. I love that that sits within a greater field or greater cycles of, of yeah, the Eros of life and death of these. And as you're saying that the, the stones and the land and, the containment of that quality inside everything that's around us as well. So yeah, and let's bring that up. Like the humility is one piece of like getting out of our own way so that we can really listen. The group work is another way that we get out of our separate self mm-hmm. and we connect to mm-hmm. something that's that's larger. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, through the group field, like accessing mm-hmm. the collective mm-hmm. and the collective consciousness in Peru especially where we're going, it's like pristine. There's not the thought pollution, you know, that we have in a lot of the, the cities. I'm, you know, I'm in America right now and the, it's election time and it's a really noisy, messy time. So I'm looking forward to the retreat, mm. <laughs> the retreat into mm. the mountains away from all that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there's one thing I, I'd like to, to add around when you just mentioned you know, the group space and, and I'm, I'm currently here, just finished teaching a six week group container. And this is one thing that I really love about this work, particularly is that there's something that, that can be done collectively in a group space that accelerates a sense of liberation, transformation, awakening. 
than than doing an individual journey. There's something in the power of uh, individual points coming together in what we talk about as a field, yeah. a collective field that allows deeper transpersonal energies to come through, sweep through. And I, I feel like there's just an acceleration of of energy and acceleration of, of, of I'd say awakening almost that yeah, I witness an, again and again, you know, in amplification, this field. absolutely. Yeah. And yes. also when, you know, when there's group arrows, it takes us out of our, I think, misuse and monopolization of, of erotic energy. Like when we're solo, it's like our arrows sometimes is like, you know, directed at one other person or it's small, it's ours. And when, when we're in a natural setting where arrows can like move and we learn to like move our and open our vertical channel mm -hmm. and we do that collectively and amplify it together, it shows us the potential of our mm -hmm. orgasmic energy of our, mm -hmm. of our erotic intention. And it's not, um, cause I think it gets pathologized when it's like, oh, my Eros is just for one other person. And it's just for a relationship. And this mm -hmm. is like, no, this is actually life force for the world and for the healing of the planet. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different game. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. And actually I feel like when you're in a, a group field where there's a, the, the erotic current is turned towards the field itself, as opposed to, as you're saying, the individual relationship that's when you actually can feel the deep connection the intimacy with the mountains and with the earth around I feel like it sweeps through the room like you have that expansion into even the non-human realms of eros absolutely you know, which he is one of my favorite terrible. place to, yeah. yes it's one <laughs> like of my favorite place love to play to the wind and yes. the, the, there's flowing you know waters nearby and it's really really sweet to mm. Mm. <laughs> to uh run energy with the elements you know it's oh I can't wait yeah. I can't wait yeah. I this work with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah yeah well I hope that this um you know gives you like a reveals a kind of a taste it sounds like there's um mutual anticipation and I'm hoping that this touches if if someone feels called to join us that you get in touch with us directly it's coming up so soon I'd say call winter call me you know write us I'm going to put the information mm. in, like in the description mm. so that you can read about it but but like mm. let's have a direct contact so we can uh yeah mm. see if it's aligned if it's really because mm. it is a powerful time it's right before the holidays mm. um last year I got to spend Hanukkah uh, there, which was very powerful. And then this year, uh, you know, I'm American and we have Thanksgiving. And so it'll be over the Thanksgiving holiday, which is a really non-traditional way to like honor the indigenous culture. So I'm mm. looking forward to that. Mm. Any, any final? Um... No, I feel, I feel for those yeah, I, I get a sense with this particular training that there'll be a calling your people will feel it. They'll feel called to this land, actually, to, to opening the work on this land. So yeah. to listen to that call and reach out to us, as you're saying. Yeah. Beautiful. Looking forward to working and playing with you. Yeah. Same, my love. <laughs> mm -hmm.